In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The first station. Jesus is condemned to death. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because of your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. This morning, Pilate sentenced Jesus to death. The crowds demanded it, and Pilate, wishing to please Caesar, gave in to the mob in the street and condemned Jesus. Caught in the middle of the screaming rabble, I heard them shout for Christ's death, cry for his blood. Those who loved him and honored him with palms when he entered Jerusalem now thirsted for his destruction. With Judas, they betrayed the Lord. Why? All he had given them was love and healing and hope. Why did they forsake him? We all betray Jesus whenever we ridicule a friend, mock a neighbor, insult a stranger. We all betray him for the same reason as Judas and the mob. Afraid to stand alone, we lose ourselves in the crowd. Afraid to stand alone, we let others determine right and wrong for us. Afraid to stand alone, we turn our backs on Christ because we are afraid. In sorrow we grieve, from our fear we shall be free. The second station, Jesus is made to carry His cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Look at the heavy cross being placed on the neck and shoulders of my Lord. They tie His arms, His face twists in pain, but He accepts the wood and turns not His head. If only I could carry it for you, O Lord. If only I could bear your cross. We see the cross and feel the pain. It is a familiar burden. Though we have never carried such a terrible weight, yet portions of this cross also lay across our shoulders. The burden of sins. The heaviness of sorrows the weight of sickness. We accept our burdens, these pieces of the cross we carry, and know they are carried first by our Lord. If He can bear our sins and pain, surely we can walk with Him to Calvary. The third station, Jesus falls the first time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Under the weight of the wood, he falls on the sharp cobblestones of the street. But even before the soldiers start whipping him, he tries to get up. He asked me at once, John, can you drink from the cup I drink? I thought I could then, but now my Lord bleeds from countless wounds. If I carried the cross and fell, would I have the strength to rise again? Christ collapses yet struggles on. How often have we fallen and failed to rise? Willing to let our weakness conquer us, willing to let sin defeat us, willing to let our pain overcome us. With John and Mary we see him stand again, pain ravaged face but eyes clear and strong. One glance at us as if to say, stay close to me and find the strength to carry on. Stay close my friends, stay close. The fourth station, 
Jesus meets his mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Mary breaks away from me and pushes her way through the crowd and soldiers to tend her wounded son. Gently she touches the blood spattered, sweat drenched face of my Lord. And gently, he smiles at her loving act of kindness. Only a moment, and the soldiers push her away. I cannot ease her pain as she weeps for her son. She carries his agony in her heart. O oh Mary, a sword of sorrow has pierced you through as you watch your only son walk slowly toward his death. How great your grief, how terrible your sadness. Jesus carries the weight of the world's anguish on his back. O mother of sorrows, weep for us as well. We who have broken families, we who have sick parents, we who have lost a loved one through death, we who suffer from shattered relationships, let your faithfulness give us courage. May your strength help us see. The fifth station, Simon of Cyrene helps Jesus carry his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. No matter how hard they beat my Lord, he is too weak to go on without help. The soldiers reach into the crowd and grab a man to help Jesus. The stranger's face is full of fear, as if just by being near Jesus he will be accused of being his accomplice. Yet, as he looks at the face of Christ, his fear vanishes and willingly he helps shoulder the burden so that my Lord may continue on. We know Simon's fear in school, at the workplace, among friends. The questions are asked, why do you believe? Do you really think Christ is the answer? Are you going to follow your faith or do what everyone else is doing? Make a choice, risking ridicule, loss of friends, and even our job. We must walk forward and let the crowd and soldiers see. Despite our fear, we will help carry the cross willingly. The sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Not all the crowd is hostile to my Lord. A woman steps forward and stops Jesus. Strangely, the soldiers allow her to wipe the blood and sweat off the face of my Lord. Again, no words, just a look of gratefulness from Jesus, and he moves on toward the hill where his crucifixion waits. But the woman gasped in awe at the cloth she used, for instead of blood and sweat, the face of my Lord is imprinted on the cloth. So many times we have looked into the faces of the suffering, the homeless, the hungry, the unemployed, the sick. Often we have simply walked away. But the times we have stopped, like Veronica, to ease their suffering, we have seen what she saw, the face of Christ looking back at us. Often walks the Christ is a stranger's clothes. Lord, give us the compassion of Veronica and make us know that any time 
someone looks at us with eyes of suffering, it is your face we see. The seventh station, Jesus falls the second time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. I watch him fall again. My God, how can you let this happen to your servant, to your son? The soldiers jerk him roughly to his feet and beat him onward. I do not think he will have the strength to go much farther. Just before my friends fled last night, they told me they could not understand how one so blessed could be so abandoned by God. I must confess, the same question haunts me. Confusion. We share it with you and the other apostles. Christ is not the only one we have watched die an unjust death. We have seen the aged wasting away in nursing homes, the child stricken with, ter with terminal illness, good people touched by tragedies not of their making, and we too ask why. And we receive no answer but what we see here. Our Lord gets up and trudges onward. Only he seems confident that God is still with him. What secret does he know? What hope does he hold on to so fiercely? The Eighth Station Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Several women now break out from the crowd and fall at the feet of Jesus, weeping. Before he is forced to pass them by, he speaks to them, telling them not to weep for him, but for themselves and for their children. For if those who hate the light do not recognize who Christ is and kill him, what will those enemies do to other innocents when he is gone? Lord, your warning strikes a chord of truth in our lives. For we live in a world that does not honor you, nor the values you stood for. A world of wars and terrorism, indiscriminate violence and random murder, lying and cheating on small and massive scales, drug and alcohol addictions. These are only some of the sins afflicting us. And yes, we weep for they cause us great pain. Deliver us from these horrors. Save us from these agonies. The Ninth Station Jesus falls the third time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. At the foot of Calvary, my Lord falls a third time. His burden is nearly too great for him. He cannot move, and the soldiers have to lift him up upon his feet and send him stumbling a short distance to the place of crucifixion. How different he looks now than when Peter, James, and I saw him transfigured in glory on the mountain. He said he had come to give his life as a ransom for the many. Is this the price of glory? Jesus, what you have undergone to save us, only now after this third fall can we feel the pain you must have suffered. Yet you never give up. So conscious of your Father's will and the destiny you have been given. Christ scorned and rejected. Keep us from being overcome by our sins. 
Save us from the misfortunes that befall us. Give us the courage to walk beside you despite our weaknesses, despite our fears. The Tenth Station Jesus is stripped of His garments. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. They ripped the crossbeam off the shoulders of my Lord, and now they strip him of his garments. His back bleeds anew where they scourged him. Bruises cover his body. He stands before the crowd, stripped of his dignity. The body that was touched reverently by those he healed and those who welcomed him into Jerusalem with palms of honor. Now that body is spit upon and struck again. Lord, my friend, what have they done to you? Jesus, when we think of the indignity you endured, how can we stop help but think of the ways we strip ourselves of our own dignity by abusing our own or others' bodies through alcohol, drugs, misplaced sexuality, or violence? When we deliberately strip ourselves or others of human worth, we are in league with your torturers. When others abuse us, we stand with you at Calvary, victims of humanity's inhumanity. For those who have suffered as you have suffered, Lord, give them dignity. The Eleventh Station Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. The Mother of Christ buries her face on my shoulder as the first nail is hammered into the hand of her son. She cannot bear to look, but I must, as I see, the violence done to my Lord. The bones are wretched, and the muscles are stretched so that the suffering will be most intense. And though he is in exhausted from his ordeal, no cries of agony escape his lips as the nail spears and the soldiers raise him up on the cross, there to bleed, there to die. It is hard to go forward and see the pain of Mary the terror of John, the horrible suffering of Christ. How do you endure, O Lord? Is your love so great that you can suffer so terribly? Without your help, how can we ever survive our own crosses? Teach us, Lord, to use our pain as a prayer for others, to endure our suffering in imitation of you, to accept whatever may happen in our lives as you accepted your cross joyfully, courageously, faithfully. The Twelfth Station Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because of your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. As my Lord hangs in agony, the mother of Jesus and I walk to the foot of the cross. I put aside my fear for Mary needs to be near her son. And so we stand and look up in grief as the hope of the whole world dies. He looks down at Mary and says to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Glancing at me, then with eyes of infinite compassion upon me, he says, Behold your mother. And he gives her into my care. 
I see him raise his head and look at you, my friends. Can you see his eyes? Do you hear him speak? What does he say to you? O Lord, as Blessed Mary and John look up at you, you breathe your last. It is finished, you say. Out of love for us, you have died. You have died to save us from our sins. From our sins, you have set us free, hanging there upon the tree, upon the tree at Calvary. The Thirteenth Station Jesus is taken down from His cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Into the arms of His mother I gave the body of Jesus. No grief has ever been so great as that moment when Mary holds the body of her crucified Son. Christ ends His earthly life as He began it, next to the heart of His mother. O Mary, if only I could ease your pain, I, the least of His followers, where I could not stop His death, how could I steal your sorrow? Under the shadow of the cross she grieves, and we with her. The sun is darkened, tremors fill the earth, as all creation groans in agony over the death of the Son of God. O Lord, your death has wounded us deeply, reminding us of the death of parents and children, the loss of friends and neighbors, even the death of our hopes and dreams. We stand stunned in sorrow over the powers that yet loom in this world to snatch life away. And in the darkness at the foot of the cross, we grieve with Mary as she cries, Who will give me back my son? Who will give my son back to me? The 14th Station Jesus is laid in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. A wealthy man, Joseph of Arimathea, has given a stone tomb for the burial of Jesus, a gift of generosity from a man who greatly admired my Lord. But we must hurry now, for the Sabbath is nearly here. We wrap the body of Jesus in a shroud and lay him in a tomb. I and others roll the stone across the entrance as evening falls, Mary and I stand in silence in this place of rest. Is it truly over? I wonder. O Lord, after such a passion and death, you rest now in your tomb. Death has taken you as it takes us all. But can the one who raised Jairus' daughter, or snatched the widow's son back from the jaws of death, or brought Lazarus back to life, can such a one truly stay dead? Lord, drive away our doubts. So often you said, I am the light of the world, I am the bread of life, I am the resurrection and the life. Break the change of death, so that we can live, so that we can believe, so that we can see. And the Lord be with you. May the Almighty God bless you and your families, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.